Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new, oops, I mean, new chapter of Nanatsu no Taizai, or you can call it The Seven Deadly Sins, on chapter 266. Now, this chapter right here, damn, dude, like, I am very well shocked of what just happened right here, and things are starting to get a little bit more crazy and intense, as usual. So, if anything else, let's go. We have to it that the chapter opens up where... Dreyfus, along with the other holy knights who stayed behind the kingdom of Leonis, protecting it from other demons. While, while Hendrickson's slatter squad is doing fine covering the West Gate and handling the demons no problem. As for Jericho, they fended off the demons from the North Key, keeping casualties to the minimum, and it looks like Jericho is doing fine herself. But we get some bad news where Griamore's squad gets killed and annihilated by, a pow by an incredibly powerful demon. Dreyfus looks at Grimoire right now in a damaged state, and he goes like, No, I can't lose my son. Please don't take my son away from me. And we have to it that all of a sudden, Dr Dreyfus grabs Grimoire and becomes a giant himself somehow. Everyone right now goes like, What in the hell is that? <laughs> Even I am shocked about this. But apparently, the magic was like full size from Dreyfus, him from Frodrin himself. So it looks like to me, like, um... He lended maybe a little bit of his power to Dreyfus, though he's already dead. We all know that. But for the time being, like um, it looks like I think he's been in Dreyfus's body. I think Frodrin has been in Dreyfus's body for a very, very long time. So I guess most of his power must have stuck to him. While the demon who defeated Grimoire's squad ends up sweating and trembling in fear, while he smiles maliciously by saying, "I can't wait to kill you for you to go after my son like that." <laughs> And we see to it that the that the knights are trying to tell the captain Captain Hauser to go after Lady Elizabeth, but he goes like, "Yeah, you don't think I realize that? But we don't have the ability to fly through the sky." King, on the other hand, says, "I'm gonna go after Elizabeth. Only I'm I am able to catch her." And therefore, like um, Grimo says, "You know, I'm sorry, King. With the four archangels, you are the only one we can count on right now." And we have to it that the Sario apparently says. What are you talking about? Defeated. And we see to it that Sario's body turn in, turns into a woman, which I go like, damn! She looked freaking beautiful, dude! <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you guys read the chapter, you, you will be shocked too. I mean, look at that. Her freaking three sizes, dude! <laughs> yeah, okay. Enough of me being a total like, perverted, perverted idiot, alright? Let's continue on. We have to it that Sario is surprised that the vessel grown greatly. And we have to it that, like, um... Let me see here. Oh my gosh, come on, Andy, think, 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 think. <coughs> um, that... Hauser asked, like, what do you say right now? And we have to it that Sario explains, like, human vessels are really fragile and unstable. You know, playing a host for a high-ranking goddess such as myself becomes a very heavy burden on them, and the result may go through various kinds of transformation. Even Sario explains, like, for example, its hair could suddenly grow out or its body could considerably develop and grow as well. Its ho the host's magic powers could even be partially left behind. Even right now, House is like, uh, what about Tar Tarmio? He hasn't transformed at all. And Tarmio explained, like, you know, my vessel was killed in a battle with a lower class demon a few days after the battle festival. So after that happened, I got consent from his soul that I that that I could borrow his body. In other words, if the vessel was already dead to begin with, then no changes would be happening at all. And we see to it that um Sardio and Tarmio were actually like um, inside these weapons of their hosts for a long time, and this is explained by Sardio that that he's been in the, he's been traveling with um, the vessel of the young Unattainer for a while now, and it was stricken by uh, incurable disease and in depths of despair. We have to it that like um, I, who was actually within that instrument, carried with her, wished to fight against the revived demon clan, so we formed a pact in exchange. She allowed her, I mean, allowed him to take control of her bodies, and as you cure the illness, and you will, I will lend you my body for you to fight. And House is like, really? So you're saying that these guys have actually like, um, what you call it? Allowed you to lend their body, allowed, allowed you to lend their, lend their bodies to you. And Sario explained, yeah, but if we continue our graces 
within the human, the bodies will be won't be able to endure it and will be destroyed. Both my host Salashido and the princess who hosts Rudicel, which is really bad. So it looks like to me, Rudicel might end up using Marguerite, Marguerite that's guilt on his love interest to the end. But I really hope that doesn't happen because we all know Rudicel is pretty ruthless, but I hope he's not that ruthless. And that's the reason why Sarya goes like, that's why we're going to return these bodies to you. So, to be honest, I actually want to continue borrowing the body until my original body was completely reformed. But we can't just lie to our vessels like that. And even now, I'm still driven by a strong sense of duty. And Sario and Tarmio decide to like, let go of their vessels. Let, let go of the vessels. And all of a sudden, they come out of the true forms like they were 3,000 years ago in the Holy War. And we see too that they go like, we're going to go rescue Lady Elizabeth and kill Esther Rosa already. And we have to it that like, um, even right now, like, um, Sario and Tarmio says like, looks like we don't really got much time though. That's the suckiest thing. And we have to it that like, um, uh, House is like, but you're up against a monster that's overwhel that's overwhelming and overpowering even for the four archangels itself. And Sario and Tarmio explain like, yeah. Let me tell you this, Estherosa is the man who killed Mal, the most powerful of the four archangels. After that, our situation in the war crumbled, the goddess clan was cornered, and we were forced to activate the goddess seal. So, right here what Sayo really explained, I guess like with Mal dead because of Estherosa, they were forced to use the goddess seal against the demon clan, and that's how badly they were in the situation. <laughs> so I guess like, um... Without Mal, they would have lost the war if it wasn't for the Goddess Seal. So I guess that's the truth of it right there. And we had to it that everyone could only listen in solemn silence while Sari and Tarmi was like, no matter what happens, if we don't defeat him here and now, the Holy Well War would never come to an end. And we see to it that Esther Rosa is taking Elizabeth somewhere and they go, we don't know why where why Esther Rosa is taking Elizabeth, but we need to hurry in, in his... We need to hurry because in his current state, he is extremely unstable, which is already hinted at or shown in last chapter, if you guys remember correctly. And we see to it that Esther Rosa, who calls himself Millie Otis, answers a question to Elizabeth. And she goes like, where are you taking me? Can you please answer me? And we had to it that Esther Rosa says, you know, the place where we always gone to, when we meet, etc. And no one would have to pry their eyes on us. But we had to it that Elizabeth goes like, that can't be. Nobody but Meliodas and I should know about that place. And we had to it that Esther Rosa, who thinks he's Meliodas, says, that's right. It's your secret and mine. And we had to it that he goes like, we had to it that Elizabeth goes like, you're not Meliodas. You are Esther Rosa, not him. And we had to it that Esther Rosa explains like, Esther Rosa, even though he's the son of the Demon King, my younger brother doesn't even have the power of darkness. He's just a useless little, and then all of a sudden, he ends up fainting out somehow and f ends up falling. And we had to it that Elizabeth activates her goddess wings and managed to catch him before he fell down completely. We had to it that like um, Elizabeth w was wondering this place and all of a sudden Esther Rosa grabs Elizabeth by the throat and was strangling her and he ends up screaming in agony while Elizabeth can only like um, hold that is being in total pain right now. So I guess this is what happens now. It's true. You see here, with Esther Rosa absorbing more than the commandment of his own, he's already destroying himself. And I'm really feeling sorry for this guy right now, honestly. Because, like, um, think about it. This guy who was born without the power of darkness was given a commandment but becomes mentally unstable, absorbs more commandments, and now he's going into a path of chaos and madness. I mean, it can't get any worse than that. Than it can. And he's grabbing Elizabeth by the throat, dude. That's even more than it has to be. Okay, an overall, an overall situation of the chapter, if I had to recap in, sim in a simple paragraph or summary, is that just the protection or defense of Leona's castle with um, the help of Dreyfus's strength, except he gets full size, apparently. Not to mention Sario and Tarmio were actually using the host of their bodies to a limited amount, and they have to let it go because, like, um... It's only causing more um, destruction to them every minute. And we get to know that um, 
it looks like they seem to know, they seem to explain to everyone that, like, um, that they want to use the vessels a little bit more, but it's only going to be destroyed in the end. And as for Sario's vessel, of course, I'm even surprised how beautifully grown she is. <laughs> Just saying. And of course, they do confirm it again by saying, you know, our graces will only end up destroying the human body, etc. So, I'm more concerned about it. Escanor, honestly, that's the thing because we all know that now that it's confirmed not only to the two archangels from Sario and Tarmiel, it's also confirmed from Ludashell and now it's showing its effects on Escanor, which if I remember correctly many chapters ago, he was coughing up blood. So, Escanor, my man, I don't know what's going to happen to you, but try not to die too early of the Holy War, okay? But yeah. Aside from that, Esterosa himself, trying to take Elizabeth somewhere, ends up fainting out, and now he's going into madness because of the commandments, causing him to go into mental destruction or chaos. So that's pretty much I could really, like, um, sum up. I wish I could put it in less detail, but that it is what it is. Anyways, though, Esterosa's gone mad again, so I hope Sario and Tarmiel, who apparently got back to their original bodies, are gonna catch up to Esterosa in time, but... I hope they have a chance to kill him or finish him off completely. Well, I don't know if Elizabeth's going to allow that at all. Because we all know how she is in the end. And But despite all that, she's still a cool character. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. So, I'm off of people. Have a good day. And I'll see you guys next time. Alright? Peace out. Bye-bye.